G'day, my name's Eb Nispel, and I'm going to be bringing you some tank gameplay on Gold Mod. Now, let's bring up one of these infamous maps from Battlefield 4. Like this is the probably ship. the true test of a tanker in Battlefield, and the reason why is it's simply just armor domination. For any of you that already follow some of my videos and have watched some of my BF5 content, you'll understand. The key to winning armor fights is getting the first shot off, being the first to the engagement, and knowing where all the enemy vehicles are at all points. And there's several ways you can go around this, which we'll be bringing up in this video. Let's get the easy things out of the way first. Nispel, what loadout should I be using? Should I be using laser lock-ons? Should I be using canister? Isn't there only one loadout that you must use in this game? The answer to this is... No. There's actually several loadouts you can use. But since there's lots of uh, vehicles that you're coming up against in this map, you probably can make the argument that auto loader was probably the best choice. But then you could also make the um, argument that having uh, reactive armor is better because you're going to be hit, being hit by lots of laser lock-ons from jets, arty trucks, or someone getting a very nice shot on your side or on your backside, unpreferably. But then you can also make the other argument, don't you want to be stealthy all the time? Do you want to have no thermal signature so that people struggle to see you a little bit more yeah. further at longer range engagements? Yeah, you can make that argument as well. Everything kind of works, but then also at the same time you can do the unsporting trick and then you're just unspotted all the time on the map. So there's generally no wrong loadout you could lose on gold mud. It's just purely situation of what is going on in game and how you're playing the map will totally depend on what kind of loadout you're going to be using. So as you can see in this map I've chosen the HMG, the AP shell, that react using active protection and as well as thermal camo. The reason I decided to use thermal camo is because I just wanted to be a little bit more cheeky and stealthy when competing in those longer range engagements. Because in Golmud, there's a lot of times where you're actually crossing open ground, and if you have a little bit of a less of a signature so that you're not getting lobbed and spotted across the map so far, then yeah, you won't get as unspotted as much. But once again, you can always just jump in and out of the vehicle real quickly, and that unspot you. One of the things you got to remember. Also, is the fact that when you're using thermal camera, it takes a little bit longer for lock-ons to hit onto you, which is probably something that a lot of people forget about as well, which is super useful. It means that when you're in a situation where you want to peek someone that has a laser lock on you, you can just peek them that's that little extra longer just to dish the damage or get... And we'll quickly touch on AP. Well, the reason why I use it is because simply it's a balance between the two shells in this game. Sabot? Sabo? Correction is generally used for long range engagements, easy clips on little birds, choppers, and jets, and HE being the farmer choice when combined with the autoloader. But AP is kind of a balance between the two of uh, being able to kill infantry but also able to kill vehicles. We also click HMG because we click on head and time tap for maximum infantry farm. Anyway, now that we've finished with the loadout, and I've just done it briefly, let's talk about the enigma that is Golmard. Why do you not see so many insane killstreaks on this map? Well, the amount of things you can die from on Golmard is completely endless, and because the map is so big, people that really, really, really do not like you and really want you to really, really, really die will make it happen very easily. Because the map is so gigantic, you can just go around the whole backside of the map and surprise them in the backside where most tankers do not like being touched. So if you have already been paying attention looking at my footage you notice that I like to use the, the big map to tra keep track of everything that's going on the map and why I mean by that is from simply where the vehicles are placed, which flags are being burnt, roughly an idea of where the map rotations are, heading towards, as well as seeing where my team is positioning myself. Also, you will also be introduced to one of the revolutions on this map, which is called the IEDs. The IEDs are not to be messed with. Please take note of where all the IEDs are on Goldman so you can pull some clutch situations off. 
which I mean by if you run out of shells and you only have one left and two tanks push you and they're pushed together and they don't see the IED there, but feel free to incline to return the favour to them and remind them that they need better map awareness by clicking on the IED and sending them back to the spawn screen. Also, one thing you will also need to be taking note of is all the spawn points for each flag. For well, one thing is, spawning on any of these maps, they are quite generous with the cover that they get. So you need to take aware. So what you need to do is take aware of where these spawn points are so you can position yourself how to deal with certain ones. Maybe position yourself in a position where your backside is not as so visible to them or they are able to easily check angles of where they are and eliminate one by one when you're on the flag where they might be spawning towards. Also do take a note that if there is a commander on the Alva team that the flag at the very bottom of the flag has a gunship which is very painful to deal with. So sticking to the top end of the map is generally uh, good for your long term survival. Also be very aware of where the uh, jets are in this game. If you know where they are and they're trying to focus you, use cover like I am using right now in this clip as well as maybe camp next to your AA as well. Also. Every once in a while, sitting a little bit further back so you can pop off a shell on a chopper that's pestering you can be worthwhile. Sometimes it's actually worthwhile to slow down your rotation from flag to flag and take note of where the enemy players are on the map and where they are going towards. If you can't see really much going on the, on the HUD and you're not entirely sure what to do, just wait maybe 5, 10, 30 seconds, even a minute. The enemy, if you control the flags and you're winning, remember the enemy has to come to you to take those flags, so be patient. Also pathing is very important. In this clip as you can see, I'm kind of a little bit silly and trying to shoot off on a bit of a slope, but it doesn't help me that I have a tank that's ramming me on the backside. Also try and avoid driving too close to other tanks, and if you're a tank driver, please do take note of the, if the tank in front of you is moving around, they kind of take priority because they're the one that's in danger most. So be generous and don't double park them and position yourself accordingly because they got there first, so it's their first choice where they get to position themselves on the map there. It's kind of like a gentleman's agreement. Also, with this flag that I'm on right here now, if you go push it solo by yourself, do take note that this is probably one of the most scuffed flags to try and retake by yourself solo. And the reason for that is there's plenty of angles for them to spawn on the flag, and generally, because there's a slope there, they can kind of pick and shoot a rocket at you without you being able to return fire back to them, and it's quite easy to play Ring Around the rosy on that flag. Also, I thought I'd put in this little clip here where you can see me getting locked on a little bit um, and I can't even really get towards this flag so I changed my position of attack and I go and use the cover accordingly just a little bit or unposition myself a little bit and wait to infantry push up a little bit more further so then we can all push together. Do also take note that when um, you're going to near any flag and there's a jeep spawn there, people can easily uh, just spawn off those and try and see for you. So every once in a while maybe blow it up. Also people like to maybe sometimes throw slams on them because when you have thermal optics on you can't really see the white on white which when you drive past with your tank might result in a sudden case of death. I know this is going to sound very scummy as well but if you have infantry on the flag capping the flag kind of might want to use them as the bait because you as a tanker you can sit out in the open and some of those spawn points they have to cross the open there and it's your responsibility to shut down those spawns so that when they try and recap the flag they have no chance in hell of getting towards defending the fl flag and plus once they get inside all of those buildings there it becomes quite tedious to completely squad wipe them as well especially if they know what they're doing doing and they're seasoned conquest in players one thing also to take note of is don't get too overzealous or audacious. And what I mean by that is notice how each side of the map you would try and draw a line through the center of the map 
and that would be one side is the enemy side and one side's your side and when you do that by the way GCIED kill nice you want to try and spend a minimal amount of time on their side and what I call this zone is the amount of dying to BS zone or also slightly smooth overzealous brain zone so in this zone since because it's getting closer and closer to the uncap there's more likely you're getting closer and closer to the respawning vehicles constantly coming towards you which in this game you only have an X amount of ammo at given time so if you go through you are kind of in a situation where you can't return fire to the enemy whatsoever also it's in a zone where you can get gained up on a bit easier as well so it comes really easy to take you out so as you can see if you're looking up ahead where the train track is and you can see where the train flag is if I go all the way up there how highly do you think it's likely I'm going to die up there especially when I have no teammates up there also it'll be me wasting a tank going there because we're already winning we also have flag majority and we'll be easily overwhelmed in that position also do take note there is an arty track on this map but luckily for you every time when that thing shoots up into the sky it's sploosh missiles you'll be able to see them coming and the quickest way to get yourself uh, out of that scenario is to do the quick jump in and out of vehicle so that you're unspotted and then just run off and repair somewhere else but do take note that when you get out of the vehicle to repair repair that you will show up on the HUD also I think you've also realized a couple of times on this map this is a very G hard enthusiast map so do take note of that and make sure you position yourself accordingly and do aim either at the pilot driving the jihad or at the c4 attached on the front to easily destroy him also the most easiest way to deal with lock-ons is always position yourself where you can break line of sight to the lock-on which you will be seen very quickly in this clip you see me get lock on and the first thing i do is hold down my s key like a little something and get myself out of the situation also do be aware the longer the map is drawn out there will be a lot more potholes so try and avoid or driving around these said potholes is probably favorable for not only your aim but your long-term survival because those potholes are very good at hiding things like slams and mines in which you do not want to deal with there is also probably I could make a whole entire video of all the places you could hide slams on this general tip to avoid being slammed any object where you can imagine yourself being on the opposite side and there's and the slams are being placed and you drive past it that could set it off drive around that said object this will not only save you shells but also being spotted on the hud anyway i've surprisingly run out of time and this is how i was able to achieve a hundred plus kill streak without dying on gold mud on 800 tickets which is honestly not to toot my own horn but phenomenal and only a few people in this world i know have actually pulled this off so hopefully this will mean that you can do it as well with my tips and thought process on this map anyway i hope you enjoyed the video as always and feel free to leave some comments or some things you would like to see in the future stay classy and i'll see you on the battlefield